In 1938, Lake Buchanan was the first of the six Highland Lakes constructed by the Lower Colorado River Authority. Named for U.S. Representative from Texas, James P. Buchanan, who helped secure funds, the dams managed flooding, and the resulting lakes provided household water and hydroelectric power. In 1997, Pamela and James Holcomb built their house on a cliff above the lake. We came up here looking for to buy some waterfront property. We went to Lake Travis first, and of course it was on a holiday weekend, and it was just packed. And so we came out here, and we drove out to the dam, and we saw one boat going out there. This is where we need to be. And we wanted to raise our son in the country. Since their land is on a sandstone pocket between Hill Country Limestone and Granite, they chose sandstone for the front walkway and a staircase to the back. So we wanted it to match the natural rock here. To steer runoff away from the house, they bolstered the top of the property with a sandstone retaining wall. We have this stone pathway that's sloped to the left, so the water just flows out that way for the natural ranges coming straight down. And I have drains on each side also that go underneath the driveway. Pamela documented their natural waterfall to the back after heavy rains. They cleared some of the mountain cedar to give breathing room to the oaks, cedar elms, and other indigenous trees, like Texas persimmon. It was just a big cedar thicket, just like it is across the street over there. It was just thick. You couldn't walk five feet without running into a cedar tree. Not only does he nurture their land, he watches out for the native plants across the street, including ferns clinging to the rocky outcrops. To restore existing native plants, including evergreen sumac, and make way for his additions, Jimmy removed lots of invasive exotic undergrowth. He never uses herbicides since he doesn't want to endanger the lake's water and its wildlife. I'd go out there and dig up, pull up things that I didn't like, like the Johnson grass and the stinging nettles and that type of stuff, and just and can't let the natural things just kind of take over. Natural outcroppings define the tiered rock wall in front. To add natural looking ledges of pocket plants, Jimmy used sandstone heat and earth. What wasn't rock was road base right here. Because when they blasted the road out, you know, they shoved all those big, big rocks down and then they had road base. So it was basically once I dug a hole, it, there was nothing there. Luckily, I was getting a lot of compost from the school <laughs> and so bringing in soil, but I had to pretty much fill every spot out there. All the rocks that are there is what I dug out of the holes. I didn't, I didn't bring any rocks in there. He nurtured the native plants that reemerged, dividing them and spreading their seeds. I've got Eve's necklace over there, and I've got uh, the cedar sage and the pigeon berries. They were all here, but I just kind of helped them along. Then he embellished them with finds of his own, mostly geared to wildlife attraction. Well, I just started putting stuff in. What lived, I kept. <laughs> and of course, I had a lot of stuff that died. I was just experimenting mainly. Well, let me try this. And of course, in a garden, something works good in one spot, and then it doesn't grow in another spot. And it's just this process of elimination, basically. They take care of themselves, and I don't have to get out here and water them. I, I don't have to do anything to them other than pull their competition up. Homegrown compost from Burnett School's food prep discards nourishes the shallow soil. In Burnett School District, the food service department started a recycling program probably about 10 years ago. Several people pick up the composting and either for their goats or for their gardens and stuff. So um, Jimmy does pick up compost at one of the schools and um, it's just a way to help the environment. A graceful staircase leads to the slope above the lake. Along the back of the house, a narrow deck traverses different perspectives. From the patio, they can watch the lake or the wildlife on the side of the property. Kind of depends on you know, where the sun's shining, if it's hot or if Cold the wind's blowing, or, and mm -hmm. either sit here or out on the lake. They accent with sentimental treasures, like the tiled table that Pamela's grandmother hand painted, and an old bell tower from Jimmy's uncle. Others were just lucky finds around town. You know, a lot of these ranches, that have estate sales, you can find all kinds of stuff. That's something off an old tractor. I found that in a, a creek bed after a flood. It's an old flywheel or something, probably been buried for years. It came out in the flood. Their real treasure? A lifestyle that values and embraces the seasons and the wildlife that enriches their lives. The tree in the backyard, uh, it looks like 
you're sitting in a tree house when you come out there. A lot of times I'll have uh, wood ducks sitting in the trees. They're the only ones that nest in trees. And I'll come in there and I'll have a pair of wood ducks sitting out there in the, in the tree. And I have a screech owl box over here. I got a picture of him sticking his head out. And I have a wood duck box down here also where they, the wood ducks nest. They'll usually have two, two nests a year. And the, the hen will lay up 12 to 15 eggs in there. She'll lay one a day, but they all hatch at the same time. Then they all jump out and swim off. And she was there the next day laying eggs again. I have to love it out here because you go through all this work and dig all the holes and then the deer come eat it. We got beavers, skunks, raccoons. I had eight, eight trees eaten one night by the, by the beavers. So it's a constant battle out here. So. But instead of trying to battle them, I've learned just to live with them and you know, put wire around the trees or whatever, to, whatever it takes to just, okay, well, you, you can stay here, but you have to work with you. The armadillos love it too, because you know, all they have to do is, is rock to dig in around here. You come in here and put some fresh soil, they can smell it. They, they must. Because I come out here and plant everything, come back the next day and it's all dug up. So I have to put wire down with my plants and then cover it with mulch too to keep them from digging it up. So. Well, sometimes it takes him three days because he'll, <laughs> he'll plant it, they'll dig it up, he'll redo it, he'll dig it up, and finally he'll do the, the metal. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a rattlesnake on our front porch there. Yeah, it's a lot of wildlife out here. <laughs> she had a rat snake fall from the ceiling. One day she was out here sweeping. Teaching my son how to sweep, and it was just Taylor and I. Oh, we were scared. <laughs> but I was proud of her. She didn't She didn't kill it or anything. She put it in a bucket. It must have stunned it, because she got a bucket and put it in there and put a, a top on it. And when I got home, I, he was wide awake by then, and he <laughs> was mad, but I took him down the road and let him go. And one night, I, the dog was standing right out here barking looking towards the house, and I was, what is he barking at? And I turned on the light, and I was just about to open the door, and I said, I, I pressed my nose up against the face, there was a skunk right there in front of the door. If I would open that door up, that skunk would have run right in the house. <laughs> and so I got the dog in, and the skunk went over there in the corner and laid down and went to sleep. And I, I said, as long as you're gone in the morning, me and you don't have a problem, and he was gone. <laughs> I like the country, you know, wildlife. We have a lot of wildlife. A lot of stories, you know.